Sunday, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is so good to see you guys again. I hope you had a wonderful week last week. I hope you're excited this morning to learn some more. We've been learning just so, so much together. So I know I can't wait to get into another Bible story. Uh, but before we do, let's just pray and let's thank God for today. Father God, we just thank you for being so generous with us, for giving us just so much and for loving us in ways that are bigger for, uh, than, than what we can understand. Lord, we just want to thank you for today where you've opened our eyes and given us an opportunity to open your word again. Lord, I just pray that you help us to understand and to learn what you have for us in your word today. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. Okay, so we've been learning a whole lot about Jesus' life in the past few weeks, haven't we? Like a few weeks ago, we read a story about Jesus being baptized by this guy. He was a messenger. He was prophesied about in the Old Testament book of Isaiah and Malachi. Who was that? John the Baptist. That's right. Now the Savior's baptism was an incredible moment for John, for Jesus, for everybody who was there. Jesus obeyed the Holy Spirit descended and God spoke. But do you remember what happened next? We learned about that last week and it was a very interesting story. You might think that after having this huge hilltop exciting moment where the heavens are parting, that the next thing to happen in Jesus' life would probably be just as exciting, right? Let's review. Let's see what we remember. Right after Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Even though this was hard, Jesus obeyed God's plan. The devil tempted Jesus three times. Each time, he was basically showing Jesus shortcuts to follow the devil's way instead of trusting and having faith in God's way. Many times sin works like that. It might seem like we can get what we want faster and easier if we just do it this way. If we lie, steal, disobey, cheat. But it's never worth it in the end. Jesus knew this. And each time the devil tried to get him to sin, what did he do? What did he use to respond to the devil? The Bible. He quoted scripture. Jesus didn't argue with the devil. He didn't try to negotiate with sin. He memorized God's word and he used it to defeat the temptation to sin. Now in today's story, we'll be revisiting John the Baptist. Today's story is actually going to take place from his perspective. But before we do that, let's just review our big picture question. Why did Jesus become human? All right, it's really starting to sound like you guys know the answer to that one. So let's hold on to those guesses, hold on to those thoughts, and let's look at our picture for the day. Okay, what do you see? All right, really quick, I want you to make three guesses about what you think is going to happen. Go! Great guesses. All right, well, let's read the story and see if you're right. Jesus and his disciples went out into the countryside. People came to see them, and Jesus taught the people. Many people were baptized. 
Nearby, John the Baptist was baptizing people too. Some of the people who followed John got into an argument. They went to John. Teacher, they said, remember the man you talked about? The one who was with you on the other side of the Jordan River? His disciples are baptizing people and people are starting to follow him. John's followers were talking about Jesus. John answered them, you heard me say that I am not the Messiah. I am the messenger who goes before him to announce he is coming. This was true. John had said, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John tried to explain by talking about a wedding. When two people get married, the man who marries the bride is the groom. His friend stands with him at the wedding and he is happy to be there and hear the groom's voice. John also knew that a wedding is the groom's special day. The groom's friend should not make it about himself. This was how John felt, like a groom's friend, because he was happy that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. John said, Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. Then John explained why Jesus was more important than himself. John was from the earth, and he could only talk about things on earth. Jesus, the one who comes from heaven, talked about things in heaven because he had seen them. Still, no one believed what Jesus said. Whoever believes Jesus knows that God tells the truth. God sent Jesus to earth, and Jesus speaks God's words. The Father loves the Son and has given him power over everything. Whoever believes in the Son will have eternal life, but whoever refuses to believe in the Son will not have eternal life. He will never be able to get away from God's judgment. John the Baptist told people to get ready for Jesus, the promised Messiah. Now that Jesus was on earth, John's mission was complete. Jesus was greater than John, and John joyfully stepped aside as Jesus began his earthly ministry. Wow. In today's story, we saw how Jesus started to teach and to baptize people. And even though these actions confused some, Jesus was obeying God's plan. When John's followers asked about this, John knew that Jesus was the promised Messiah. John the Baptist told people to follow Jesus. Okay, so it's big picture question time, and we keep asking this question from week to week as we learn more and more about Jesus' life. And it seems like all of these stories are kind of like little pieces that are coming together to help reinforce this point, to help us really understand this answer. So, here's the question. Why did Jesus become human? Jesus became human to obey his father's plan and rescue sinners. Well done. And I bet your ears were just buzzing. Did you catch it? I bet you heard that John the Baptist, in today's story, he said our key passage. John knew that people wanted to follow him. And when he saw that, he had to point them in the right direction. It wasn't about him. His life was all about pointing other people to Jesus. So let's practice what he said. He must increase, 
but I must decrease. John 3, 30. Really nice work and, and just keep, keep practicing that. Keep doing what you can to remember that at all times because I know for me, there are just some times where I want things to go my way. I do. <laughs> and I want people to notice me or I might just want somebody to think that I'm cool or whatever it is. But in all of those moments, it's so important that we remember that our lives from moment to moment, all of the time, they're about pointing other people to Jesus. All right, kids, parents, now's our time. I'm gonna shift it over to you guys at home. I want you to grab your Bibles. Do a fist pump with your Bible, whatever you gotta do to get excited, to continue learning, to continue reading together and discussing. So here are some questions to go along with our scripture today, which was in John chapter three, verses 22 to 36. Here they are on the screen. What does this story teach us about God? What does this story teach us about man? What does this story teach us about Christ? How should we respond? And I have another bonus for you this week. Why did John say Jesus must increase and he must decrease? Okay, I want you to think about the story and then I want you to read Luke chapter 14, verse 11. All of those questions are gonna be back up on the screen at the end of this video. Parents, you can always go to your email newsletter to look for discussion starters for each age group from week to week. And if you go to our kids page, you'll find more content there. Guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you for learning with me and for just looking into God's word. It is the only place that truth can be found. And I want you to remember this week. I want you to remember that life goes better, not only just for us, but for everybody around us when we obey God and we live the way he intended. Okay. Life goes better for us when we think less of ourselves and we increase the name of Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for being so patient with us when we forget you, when we're too busy thinking about us, too busy thinking about ourselves. Lord, thank you for being generous and for loving us in the form of your son, showing us what it is to obey you and to love you authentically. Lord, I just pray that you help us to be messengers. Help us to spread the message about Jesus. We love you and we praise you and we hope to bring you glory every day. Pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. So wonderful to spend time with you all. I miss you guys so, so much. Have an awesome week and I'll see you next time.